Here we are again. Jason here to walk you through how you can go in and you can match color. And what is matching color? Well, matching color is when you have something and you want to take the swatch or the object that you have that somebody's given you and then match that color to, say, a shirt. And this is very common in the world of products, catalogs, where you're given a product and this shirt may come in numerous different colors, but they may not have all those colors. So this is something that I do quite often with bags and shirts and shoes and cars and whatever I want to take and I want to match a specific color. So a client may come in and they may give me a color and they may give me a color that's going to be RGB or a lot of times they give me a Pantone color and they may say, okay, you know what? We've got a Pantone color here and it's Pantone 1785. Okay. So I go to my color picker and I go to my color guide right here and my color libraries and I put in the color that I want and click OK. I then take that color and I put it on its own layer inside a selection, just like that. This is the color that I want to match for this shirt. Okay. Now, the problem with this is, is that they're giving you a flat color and obviously this isn't a flat shirt. Yes, it's flat, but we still have lots of textures and colors here. And I can't just go into this shirt and be like, okay, I'm going to take a brush on this shirt and be like, great, there's my color. Now I need to paint with opacity here. I'm going to go in and be like, okay, I'm just going to paint that shirt and that's what it looks like. Well, no, that doesn't work. We need to change the color of this shirt to match my color swatch here. So this is what we do to match the color. One thing we don't do is we don't just go into our adjustment layers and do our curves and be like, oh, you know, I think I'm going to do some red here and change that. And it's like, oh, why isn't that working? And, you know, this is crazy. I, yeah, don't worry. You know, not where you want to go. Want to do this in a very sim uh, systematic way. So you're going to need your window menu and you're going to need your info panel because your info panel is going to tell us what's going on. So starting with my original layer, what I want to do is I want to use my hue and saturation adjustment to get this color as close to this target color as possible. So I'm going to go into my layer adjustment, I'm going to choose hue and saturation, and the hue and saturation I'm going to go and I'm going to run this over to the color area that I think is going to be best. Okay, And it's going to be kind of in this reddish kind of red area over here. All right. I'm not going to mess with the saturation at all because I want to get this kind of targeted as close here. And this is about as close as it's going to get to this color. Don't try to get this much closer here and here because you're going to be just kind of paddling up the creek. So let's take a look at our info panel. And what I want to look at here is I want to look at what my color actually is. So in order to get the correct reading, I'm going to go to my color swatch that I have here on this layer, and I'm going to hover over this color swatch, and then I'm going to take down this number. And this number is going to be the composition in red, green, and blue, right there, of what this image or what this color is actually made of. So I have red at 254, I have green at 74, and I have blue at 93. Okay, those are my colors. And I'm going to do this by the numbers. Now, if your info panel isn't showing you what you want, you can click on your cheese grater under your panel options, and you can have the first color readout, which is here, as being the actual color, because I want the actual color. And the second color readout can be grayscale, RGB, web color, you know, total ink opacity, whatever you want. In this case, it doesn't matter, but you can set this up with multiple different color readings. So, when I look and I click on my color swatch layer and I hover over this, these are the numbers that my red, green, and blue are supposed to be. So now what I need to do is I need to go back in to my hue and saturation layer, okay? Because if I go to my if I go to my blue layer here and I go all over, this is registering the color of the blue, okay? Even though I have my adjustment layer on here, this is the layer that's selected and I hover my cursor over, this red, green, blue number is actually my color of my shirt. So I want to go to my hue and saturation layer and hover over this. 
Okay. Now, what we have here is we have two sets of numbers. The first set of number before the slash is the pre-adjustment. The number after the slash is the post-adjustment, meaning this adjustment layer here is adjusting the color. It used to be red, it had two, and now it's 144 because of the adjustment layer. So anytime you see that slash here, you know that the slash is after adjustment. Okay, so right now, just going over the shirt here, I have roughly red at about 150. And if I go back to my color swatch here, I need it to be 254, green 74, and blue of 93. And I always write these numbers down because I won't be able to remember them. So I'm going to go back to my adjustment layer here and park my cursor in here. So red's at 149, and I need to go up to 254. Green is at 38, and it needs to go up to 74. And black is at 2, and I need, or sorry, not black, blue is at 2 or 3, so I need to go up to 93. So above this hue and saturation layer, I'm going to do a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to move that out of the way so we can see our info panel as we go. Now we don't really need our info panel at this point, but here's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go to the red here. And guess what? This is where our red is. Now I could use my finger scrubby too, but it's going to land it right at this point. I just know it. Okay. So on my curves adjustment layer, I can grab my finger scrubby because it's convenient and it works. I can see that red is at 150. Well, based on my pink or my salmon color that they gave me, red needs to be at 254. So I target my finger scrubby. I come in here and I click on the same location and I'm going to go up to 254. Okay. And it's going to go all the way to the top, which is as much as I'm going to get. Great. Okay. Now, all of a sudden you're like, wow, this looks terrible. Don't worry about it because we have to adjust all of this at once. It may look worse before it looks better. Now in that same adjustment layer, I'm going to target my green. And if I come back in here, green needs to be 74. So I'm going to click in that same location I adjusted before, and I'm going to bump this up to 74. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my blue as well. And blue, I come in here, and blue needs to come way up and I need my blue at 93. Okay, like that. Okay, so there was my adjustment by the numbers. All right, there it is. So there's my shirt, and there's everything overall. Now, the true test of making sure you get that color match exactly the way it should be is if you take your color swatch and put it on your shirt to make sure it matches. If it disappears and you can't see it, you have a color match. Now, you'll notice that this shirt looks a little bit less detailed, okay? Only because we're going from a moderately saturated to an extremely bright color. So you'll notice how it's lost some of its shadows here. It looks just a little bit washed out right here and we don't have the shadows in here. We're gonna show you how to bring these shadows back with this really cool trick. But there it is, now it matches, okay? I mean, look at that. You call and bring that color swatch over there and you can't tell. But I did lose some of the contrast in the shadows here. So I'm going to do this really awesome trick. I'm going to shut off all of my adjustment layers and go back to my normal background layer. I'm going to go into my channels here and I'm going to click on my blue channel, my green channel, and my red channel. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the best distinction of just the shadows here. The red channel, way too saturated. There's no distinction of the shadows whatsoever. My green channel has some good distinction of the shadows, but I also have a moderately saturated um, body. I'm going to go to my blue channel here because it's going to give me a fairly light shirt with the decent shadows. I'm going to take my blue channel. I'm going to drag it down onto the plus button, which is going to duplicate that blue channel. On that blue copy, I'm going to do a levels, which is Command or Control L, and I'm going to bump up my overall highlights to basically blow out any of my highlights or midtones. And I'm just going to bump up my shadow slider a bit just to get those little shadow details. Okay, I don't want much else, so I really want to go in and overdrive this whole thing. Okay, 
And so I'm getting just the shadows here. Okay, not much. I don't need much here. You know, I don't want all of this because this is going to change the color. I don't want all this detail here. I just want the shadow. So I may go in and I may adjust my brightness overall just to grab the shadows. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to command click on my channel to get the selection. And I also want to go under select the inverse so I get just the shadows. Now this is where Photoshop doesn't show you the whole picture. I know it looks like just a barely, just a teeny little amount is selected. It's not true. Anything that isn't white is selected. It's just that the marching ants don't show up on any values that are under 50%. So this whole thing is selected, you just don't see it. Okay, trust me on this. Now, click back on your composite channel, go back to your layer menu, and I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna turn on all of my colors here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on my topmost layer, add a new layer to this, which is going to be my shadows here. And on my shadows, I'm going to go back in and I had my color picker that I had chosen the color with. And this was a Pantone color, so I'm going to go back to my color picker and it's going to represent this color as best I possibly can. I'm going to go to my brightness button because what I want to do is I don't want to fill my shadows with black here. I want to fill it with a darker color of that color that was supplied to me. Okay, so not like completely dark, but darker. And I click OK. So now I have a darker version of this color on my shadows. Now with my selection active here, even though it doesn't look like much selected, and my darker version of this kind of salmon or coral chosen, I'm going to Option or Alt Delete and fill my selection on my new layer. And you notice when I do that, it actually filled that whole thing, okay? Now, I did that once. If I Option or Alt Delete and do it again, you see it'll fill again. Now, if you keep doing this, it's going to start to change the overall color, okay? So normally, I only go in and do the Option or Alt Delete once, okay? That's it. Why? Because I can always double up this layer or triple up this layer if I want more. But if I do it all on one layer, then I'm stuck with it. Make sure you deselect. Go back under here and do Command D for deselect. And check that out. Do you see how it adds those shadows back into your image? Now, with every shadow, go in to your blending mode and choose multiply, which is then going to take that darkness and multiply that over the shirt to bring back the depth and dimension of that shirt, which we kind of lost when we did those colors. Now, if I take my color swatch layer and put it over here on top, there we go you can see that it still matches pretty close. And the reason why it doesn't match exactly now is because what have we done? Well, all this little detail of the fabric we have added back in when I did my shadow layer, okay? So when we selected that channel, we had actually selected each and every individual piece there because we kind of lost a little bit of the texture when we overdrove the colors. And you can see how we kind of got that blue cast. But by going back into the channel and grabbing those shadows only, we were able to go back in and put those shadows back in on the shirt to make it look realistic. So check this out. There's my blue shirt and there's my coral shirt. And you look at that and you're like, wow, that looks exactly the same. And it is. So this is a really cool way to be able to go in and change the color of something, not by randomly doing levels and curves and trying to find it, because it, it won't work that way, you'll get so lost. Doing your hue and saturation first, and then do using your info panel to measure the color here, and then go back into your channels, grab the one with the selection, or the contrast, make it more contrast, grab a selection from it, create a shadow layer, fill it with a darker version of your shirt, multiply it, and there you have matching color, okay? It's a lot of steps, but the results are going to go ahead and be pretty amazing. Once you go ahead, grab your color swatch, put it over there, if it pretty much disappears, you nailed it. Color matching, that's how it's done.